Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to talk about completing the square. This is another essential skill for AS Maths. I'm going to do six examples. Please do pause the video, have a go on your own and keep practicing them. We'll look at a couple of applications of completing the square, but please do check out my other video, which is using completing the square to derive the quadratic formula. It's a really lovely direct application of it, and it's a really powerful tool. All right, let's get started. Okay, completing the square is just another way of rewriting a quadratic expression. I'm saying expression and not equation because there's no equal sign. This isn't equal to anything at the moment. So it's just an expression and we're going to rewrite it in the form x plus a number squared plus another number. Now, to get the number in here, it's really easy. We just halve the middle number. So half of 6 is 3. Now, to get the last number, we're going to keep what we've got there. So that's plus 4. But we also need to take away this number in the bracket squared. So 3 squared is 9. Now the reason for that is if you expanded out this bracket you'd have a plus 9 at the end but we don't want that plus 9 so we need to take it off to counterbalance it. Just to check if you're not familiar with this let's just really quickly convince ourselves that this is right. This will by the way cancel down simplify to x plus 3 squared minus 5. Let's just convince ourselves that's the same as what we started with by multiplying out the double brackets which we'll have here and taking off 5. Yes, that's what we started with. So if you're not 100% sure or if you're in an exam, it's a nice way of quickly checking that you've got that completed square version right. Okay, let's have a go at this one. Half of 4 is 2. Now because I've got a minus this sign, I'm going to put a minus there. So you just match the signs, so that's no problem. Squared outside the bracket, we've still got plus 6. And we need to take off this number squared. Now minus 2 squared will be a positive number. So it doesn't matter whether you've got plus or minus in this bracket, you're still going to take off whatever that number is squared. So that will be 4. Okay, this last one here is slightly trickier. If we have 3, I'll keep that as a fraction, 3 over 2. Now we've got fractions in the mix on this one. Okay, 3 over 2 squared, 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. Okay, and that's it. So we can cope with fractions. Let's look at one quick application of completing the square. And that is, it's another way, again, of solving quadratic equations. So if you are happy with this method, you can always use this to solve a quadratic equation. If I set all those equal to zero like I have, then over here we can actually solve them. So, if that's equal to zero, I'll write it in the completed square form. So that's equal to zero. Now we can take the five over to that side by plussing it. Now we can square root both sides. When we square root five, you can leave it as a third, root five. But please do remember, you get two answers. You get a positive and a negative. We don't need brackets around that anymore. Now you can take off the 3. I like to write that at the beginning, so that's a minus 3, and then plus or minus root 5, and they're your answers. Now you don't get a calculator in core 1, but if you did have a calculator and you put that in, that should be the same answer as you would get if you used the quadratic formula to solve this. Because it's such a messy answer, obviously it's not factorizable but that should be the exact answer. 
Let's have a go at the other two. Please do pause the video and have a go on your own if you can. Okay, this one, because we got to the point that we're square rooting a negative number, you can't do that. In fact, that would be an imaginary number, which you come across if you studied further maths. So it's got no solutions. No real solutions, anyway. Let's do the last one. Okay, well done if you got that right. Let's now take a look at some harder examples. Okay, these examples now are going to have numbers at the beginning that are bigger than 1, so they are a little bit more complex. And the first thing to do is to take that number as a factor out of the first two terms. So that will be 2x now. Only the first two terms, the last term, can stay as it is. Now we can proceed as normal. We'll halve this number to put it in here. Still got the plus 1 on the outside. Now we need to take off this number squared. 1 squared is 1, but we must remember to multiply it by 3. OK, let's solve this equation up here. Alright, I'll give you a couple more. Please do have a go at them on your own. The last one's going to have fractions, so watch out. Okay, that last one was about as hard as they get, so very well done if you got that one right. Please do keep practicing these. Alright, the very last application I want to show you of these is so useful. I'm going to put the first three examples we used back on the board. Now this is the very first example we started with. And this application is if we had this equal to y and we wanted to draw the graph. Now this requires knowledge of the transformations that you need in core 1. So that's if you've got adding and taking away on the inside and outside of functions, which way it will move the graph. If you haven't studied that yet, please do go learn that and come back to this part of the video. But if you have done that, great, stay with me. Please do have a look at my other video, by the way, that is looking at those graph transformations. Okay, so a quadratic graph looks, if we take the very basic form, y equals x squared, it will have a shape, as you probably know, like that, like a u, and the y equals x squared one just turns on the origin 0, 0. 
Now this one's a bit more interesting, it will turn somewhere else but it will still have the general shape. If we write it in the completed square form like we did at the beginning, now this has got adding and taking away on the inside and outside of the function. On the inside it's got an add 3, so that will move it horizontally, adding moves it to the left. So it's going to move left by 3, and on the outside we've got to take away, so that's moving it down by 5. So take this graph, move it left 3 and down by 5, the turning point's now going to be down here somewhere at minus 3, minus 5. So you can just get the turning point coordinates literally just by looking at that. That's how useful completed square form is. Let's do that for the other two that we did at the beginning. Okay, looking at these then, we've got a minus on the inside, that's going to move it right to, and a positive on the outside, that's going to move it up to, so the, going back to the origin, it's going to move right to and up to, the turning point will be at 2, 2, both positive. And on this one here, we've got positive on the inside, that moves it left by 3 over 2, and down 1 over 4, so the turning point will be at minus 3, 2, minus 1 over 4. That is such a useful application of completing the square, I hope you can see. So if you're ever asked where a quadratic turns, maybe try completing the square, it's really helpful. Okay, keep practicing and have fun!